Hi, this is Asin. Today, I would like to share how to create combo box on worksheet and add items to it. First, go to Developer tab. Click on Insert. Look for the second control under ActiveX Controls. Choose the desired place and insert the combo box. If we have a list of information available on any worksheet, we can insert the item without using VBA coding. Click on Properties, look for the list field range, type the range starting from the first data set, which means that we should exclude the header. We should start from A2. So we type here A2. Use colon to indicate a range. Scroll down and look for the last data, which is C30. Press Enter. And we should have insert the items. Off the design mode, click on the drop down, and we should have the items here. Unfortunately, as we can see, we have only one column. Suppose we have one, two, and three columns. On the design mode, click on the combo box, and this time we should look for the column count. Change to three. And if we have headers, we should set the column hits to true. Let's off and click. As we can see, we have headers now, but the problem here is the alignment isn't nice because as we can see, not aligned to the desired place that we want, as we can see here. So to change the alignment or the column width, let's on the design mode. Click on the combo box and this time we should look for the column widths. Suppose Excel need the value in terms of point. If let's say we have no idea on what the values to be used for point, let's use CM. For example, we can type 2CM for the first column. Use semicolon to split in between the width of columns. So we have 5cm for the second column and 2cm for the third column. Remember to press Enter key on the keyboard and Excel will help us to convert to point. If let's say we want the width of the combo box to be fitted nicely according to the column width that we input, let's sum up the values. So we take 56.7 plus 141.75 plus 56.7, which is equivalent to 255.15. Scroll down and look for the width, and we change to 255.15. Press Enter, and we should have adjust the width. Off, and click, and we should see a very nice table as we can see here. Now we've lost say the data set is from the other worksheet, for example, the tab data. We just have to go to the list field range and include the name of the tab. Make sure the range is same, otherwise we should update the range as well. So first go to the tab, check the range also from A2 up to C the D. So we can remain the range, but we should include the name of the tab for this case is data and followed by exclamation mark press enter and the combo box should be updated according to the tab data of the design mode click and check if let's say we change the data from this tab for example change to 1.45 and excel should update the place accordingly as we can see here everything is automated in the event when user updated the list by inserting a new item when we back to the combo box unfortunately we couldn't see the new item this is because we have fixed the range and cover up to C30 only to overcome this issue we can actually create table so select the range that we have, either use the shortcut key, Control T, or press on this. Go to Tables and click on Table. 
once being converted to deeper, then everything should be automated, which means that when we add a new item and back to the compo box, the list should be updated automatically as we can see here. Also, if let's say we deleted two items from this table, right click and look for delete, delete the table rows. When we back to the combo box, as we can see, will also be deleted, which means that the update is done automatically. If you want to convert the table back to range, select the table, right click, click on tables, convert to range. Click on yes, and we should back to range. If you want to remove the format, click on cell styles and normal, and everything should back to original. Let's delete the existing combo box and insert a new combo box so that we don't have to change the setting and reset the information that we entered previously. And now we should be able to try another method by using the VB coding. Let's proceed to Visual Basic. To choose which sheet to be used depends on the data list. If let's say we want to use the list on data tab, and we should insert the data, insert the code here. Since we want the whole box to be updated automatically whenever the list is changed or amended. So we should check on worksheet and change the procedure to change. Is there any changes we should update the list? So always make sure that the combo box is clean so that we don't have any repeated values or incorrect values. To clear the combo box, of course, we have to first call the combo box. Where is the location? Located in the worksheet tab, which is sheet one. So we have sheet one dot combo box one dot clear. And next, we are going to run through the first column and retrieve the information. We don't have to run through every single column because we can run as a set. When we know the first column, then we can automatically add in the values of the second and the third column. So we just have to run by using the for loop for each cell that we have in the first column. So in sheet, what is the data list that we want to refer? Sheet 4, the data list. So sheet 4 dot range, type the range. So we have A2 to A3, only the first column. And we should always bear in mind that if you want to update the list automatically whenever the user updated or we want to remove the items whenever the user deleted an item. So if we don't want to fix the range but update automatically, we need another dummy here. So let's say A is the sheet or dot cells. We are going to run through the first cell and then make use of VB and check the last cell. So if let's say we want to check the coding, we shouldn't include the location of the cell first. Otherwise, we are not able to see the suggestion. So dot, what we need is to go to the end of the row. So which means that we are going to move down, just XL down. To get to know the row number, then we dot row. Then only we add the location, first row, first column, so that we can have the suggestion. Otherwise, if let's say we have added this initially, we are not able to see the suggestion. Then high chances we will type wrongly if we couldn't remember the property. And then we can remove the last row of the cell and we make use of emphasis and connect with. A. So everything will be automatically. So next, we already have the range. Of course, we need to call the combo box and add in the items. So with sheet one dot combo box 
1 and we could now add. So if let's say we want to let the Excel to know how many columns we have, then we dot column count. All together we have 30 and dot columns width. As you hear, as what we have done just now, so we can make use of CM, but make sure that we input as string. No values at all must be string. Make use of quotation mark. So 2CM semicolon to split in between columns, 5CM and followed by 2CM. If you want to adjust the combo box width, also can. So dot width. And this must be in terms of value and in point, not CM. So we, if we have no idea what number should we use, we can ask Google. So we have 252, which means that all together 9CM. 9CM is equivalent to 255.118 in point. So we have 255.118 in point. And next, what we need to do here is add item. So dot add item. We just have to add whatever information that we read from all this single cell. So cell. After added this, we already have one item in the list. So which means that we are able to run through for each column. So we make use of the deeper property. So dot list. And we are going to count, so dot list count. If you want to count, we have to be careful. Since we already have one item, then list count will return the value one. We always bear in mind that in Visual Basic, the compo box is treated as with row starting from 0, 1, 2, and so on, which represent first row, second row, and third row respectively. So which means that we should have zero value for the first row. But now list count is one since we have one item. To correct it, we just have to minus one. One minus one, we get zero, which is correct. And we want to have the second column. Again, same thing. So second column is two. Then we one back, so minus one. Two minus one is one. And this will be equal to the value since we call this. Then we just have to move from this cell to the right, one step to the right. So we use the offset property. So dot offset. And what we need here is move one step to the right, but maintain the row. Since we are not moving up or moving down, moving up minus, moving down plus, maintain so we put zero and to the right plus to the left minus so for this case to the right so plus one and we have for the second column so i'm going to copy so that we don't have to type again we just have to change the value accordingly so we change to the third so three minus one is two and offset two steps one and two step to the right so two start with if of course we need to end with if done the first cell we proceed to the second or the next cell and so on basically the coding part is done let's check the result of the design mode click on the drop down and we will realize we have nothing here this is because the code is designed the combo box is updated whenever the list is changed so try to change the list and check so instead of using 1.5 let's say we have 1.45 once the list is changed when we back to worksheet and click on the list we are able to have the list and the list will be auto updated if new item is added so for example we have D08. Back to the sheet, we click on the drop down and we have the new item here. This is also applicable if we deleted, let's say, two rows. So, which means that our list should stop at D06. Back to worksheet, click on the list as we can see up to D06. 
only. We have an issue here. The compo boss will lose the information when we reopen the world for even we have saved it as we can see here. To overcome this issue, let's back to Visual Basic. Copy the code that we have written and go to this workbook. For the object, we change to workbook and make sure the procedure is open, which means that whenever the workbook is open, we should run for this code. Okay, let's save, close, and close. Let's check. So we open again, and we should have now updated list as we can see here. Also, when we go to data and change the price, for example, the list will be updated automatically. Someone might be questioning how let's say we want to have exactly the same header as the range or the table that we have. Let's try on the design mode and delete the existing combo box and insert a new one so that we don't have to reset whatever we set previously. And back to Visual Basic, make sure we go to the data sheet, sheet 4. Make sure we look for the change procedure. So that everything that is changed, we should update the combo box. We are not going to use clear anymore. For this method, we are going to make use of a range and print directly to the combo box. So in order to make use of range, make sure that we're not using clear. Otherwise, this will result in error since the item is not added to the combo box, but referring to a particular range that we set. Also, remove the for loop since we are not going to loop and add the data. So not starting with for should not end with next. The column count can be retained since we should also let the Excel to know how many columns we have as well as the width and the width. So what we have to do here is to add and let the Excel to know we have here there. So dot column Hit. Set to true. Next is to tell the range. So use dot list field range. Should exclude their header. We want the data set only. This property will help us to print the header directly. So what we have here is based on their data set on sheet 4 and the name is data. The input of these properties must be in terms of string. So we have to make use of the quotation mark. And the name of the sheet, data, followed by exclamation mark. We should always bear in mind that let's say we are using the data from the other sheet other than the current sheet, which is sheet 4. We should name the sheet before we tell the range. Otherwise, the Excel couldn't give the correct range. This is very important. We should take care. So we start from the first cell with the data, which is A2. Use colon to indicate the range. And we should take up to the column C. So we have C. And we can stop here since we are going to make use of A to run and check for the rows that we have. Make use of emphasis to connect string. So we have A. To follow basically we have done this is shorter as compared to the previous one okay let's try so off the design mode and go to the detail shape now let's check the price if let's say we change to 1.45 the list should be automatically updated as we can see together with the header that we want okay that's all for this video thanks for watching hope you like this see you